Why, hi there, it's Uncle Ron. I don't need to wait a five count. This isn't going live. How are you? I got asked a question a couple nights ago, or maybe it was last. I don't remember. Uh, asking me to compare Strat, uh, Elmatic Baseball, to Action PC Baseball. And I'm assuming he's the person in question was asking about Strat PC. But I figured, first of all, I'm terrible at commenting at, on, on your comments. I do read them all, but I not always comment on them, or any of them, as a matter of fact. But this one, I thought, deserved a little more attention. So I'm going to do a video on it. It's, let's talk first about Stratomatic, a little bit about APA, and some of those games. The card and dice games, they were open engines. You know how the results are are how they get the results. You roll a die. In Strat's case, you read the card. Uh, sometimes you go to a chart in Napa. You go to the right base chart, pay off pitch, obviously roll some dice. And you know how an open engine works. You see where the work comes from. You know that the dice are random unless you have your special Boston Red Sox dice, which always roll exactly what you want. No. In, but in all seriousness, you know what you're using for dice, you know what you're using for cards, you know where the work is coming from, and you can trust and believe the engine that you enjoy, okay? When you go to a closed engine game, such as Action PC, that becomes harder because you're trusting the computer to give you the right results. And if you are a pure card and dice player, uh, you know, can you trust any computer game engine to give you what you want? And of course, the other question is, what is it exactly that you want? Do you want teams to finish relatively close to how they did in real life? Uh, are you looking for specific players to perform on a real life average? You know, are you looking for George Brett to hit 390? in 1980 are you looking for greg maddox to to match his walk totals can bob tewksbury or bob or bob gibson or you know do what you know their voodoo can you get giancarlo stanton to hit 60 some or close to 60 homers leading out the leadoff spot all those things that you can obviously see with a card and card and dice engine gets closed in, in any computer game. And there's some very good computer games. There's D Diamond Mind. There is Action PC, which we're talking about. There's OOTP, which has its own little kettle of fish as far as how good of a replay engine is concerned. But any, anything from the closed engines of these games to the open, end, open design engines of the card and dice game. Now, I'm sold on Action PC. I've broadcast close to 300 games with it over the last two and a half years. I've done two season replays in post -seasons. You're going to see the results of my 1978 replay because I think, although it's not with the current edition of Action PC Baseball, I think it tells a pretty good story of how the game, how I think the game does. I've done 1982 and I've done 1978. Uh, Dave Cook's games, I think, are fairly accurate. They are not limited into, let's say, someone, player X has 50 goals or 60 homers or 45 doubles. You can continue to do that. Uh, if you believe in the bell curve, everything is going to be within 90, 95% of what they should be. Now, if you're a big stickler for individual player performance, I'm not sure any sim, open-ended, open-engined or closed-engined, is going to be what you're looking for. It's harder to replicate things on a micro level you can get them on a macro level you get them right enough on a macro level everything else kind of falls into place so there are going to be variabilities between uh what a player did in real life and what a player did uh on your tabletop or on on your pc uh the good thing about action pc is it tells you everything that the player did in real life and you can follow along some players are obviously going to run hot. Some players are obviously going to run cold. Some players are going to be Goldilocks and be right in that sweet spot for you. Um, again, if you're coming from an open engine to a closed engine, you know, if you're going from a tabletop game to a pure computer game, it becomes a button-mashing exercise. Some people don't like that. 
one of the things that I find good with any open engine game or card and dice game is you record the results. You have, a, even if you're not really making any decisions except for when to pull pictures or or when to, you know, occasionally when to steal and all that, you're still recording the results. You're playing the game here. It does all the statistical work for you. It keeps track of everything, keeps track of a lot of different stats, by the way. Um, and so if you're tired and plus playing a single team, yeah, it can kind of get wearing if all you're doing is going advance, advance, advance. Uh, what I like about the Action PC ga gaming family is it gives you, I think, enough decisions to keep you on your toes. You can set it up for the baseball to make any base running decisions for if there's more than a 30% chance of the runner taking an extra base. Do you make that throw to the plate? And it tell you can set it up to say it, you have a 2% chance of making this throw to the plate to get the runner out at home. Okay, and you can do that again. You can't see where um, what the results are, but you can imagine if you're rolling two d10s and you need to roll a one or a two to get it, that that would be the result. It does not tell you what the result is. You can't say it is. Uh, you rolled a 45 and you needed a two. You, you, that's just best left to the imagination and reading the play, reading the play by play uh, on the box. Um, what else can I say? Uh, uh, again, I think if you, if you trust the game to do its thing, it will give you what you want. The advantages, of course, with a computer is or action PC is. For any season past 1941 and so, some before that, I don't know what the new claim is for that, uh, you can play as-played lineups. So, so if you are an as-played player, and when I do these re my replays, they are as-played, not because I'm a stickler for accuracy in that, but it gets the usage right because they're there for the lineups and because we bounce, I bounce in and out of different series and different games, like the game of the day or something like that, it gives me the extra challenge of managing the bullpen, and man and you know, like, there's no way in hex, for instance, with someone with three starts and an ERA close to seven that I would use them. That's not what I want in a simulation, or for my own enjoyment, because it's going to be very difficult to win that game. But because the, that happened in real life, you're kind of stuck with that, and because the computer plays most of the schedule and I play, a roughly. 5%, I think I played a 78's replay. Actually played, and the computer played 95%. You can do that. You can also do a lot of what-ifs. Uh, you can have transaction dates be there. I mean, there is so much versatility with Action PC. You can dress and taste it however you'd like. And so it's great if you're a single-team replayer. Maybe for those you don't want to have the computer uh, go with an as-played lineup. Maybe just have the rosters for the current day there, and you can mix and match to whatever your heart desires. You could, of course, you can do that with the open-ended engines such as Strat and Napa, but you have that option here. The one thing I will say as far as AI is concerned is I do think for the most part the computer is a very solid opponent for in-action PC. When I play Strat PC for any of the sports, and I own all but football, I manage both sides. I treat it like I'm actually sitting at the table playing cards and dice. Uh, I have no trouble playing against the action PC AI. It, of course, makes mistakes, but we all make mistakes in the heat of the moment. I think action PC tells you enough information for you to make an informed choice depending how you want to play. But let's take a look at the, at the meat and potatoes of it. Let's take a look at how... 1978 did in real life compared to how my sim season came and we'll go through the standings. We got this nice handy dandy report. Let's do this by league. Let's start in the National League. These are the real life numbers from the 1978 season. The league overall hit 254, an on base percentage of 320, a slugging of 372, and an OPS of 692. Now, 
that, so that would be what I'm looking for. That's how I judge there. I'm not necessarily concerned about what San Francisco, New York, and Atlanta hit as a team, although very poorly. I, I want the good hitting teams to hit well and that. So the macro line, 254, 320, and 372. 253, 314, 366 for an OPS of 680. And again, Atlanta, San Francisco, and New York didn't hit all that well. Chicago, Los Angeles, and Pittsburgh did hit all that well. Their stolen base percentage, because that's a big thing in any AI. The computer tried to steal 2,500 bases. It was successful 67.8% of the time. The Pirates, with all that speed, 231 stolen bases for a success rate of 73.1%. In real life, the Pirates stole 213 bases with 90 stole caught for a stealing percentage of 70.3. The real life stolen base percentage was 67.9%. I think the game runs low on triples, personally, or it did in the 82 version. So let's see how we did in the NL this year. 482 triples in real life. 420. See, that's not within that 90%. But then again, it's not terrible, terrible, terrible. Runs scored. I had 7,831. They had 7,742. For me, that's well within the line of tolerance. Home runs. 1,276. 1,272. We were off by four. Let's take a look at the Reds. They had 127 homers in my replay. And they hit 136 in real life. It's only nine off. Okay. We'll do the same thing in the American League. Average 261, 326, 385 for 711 OPS. 720. It ran a little hot. Batting average 266, 330, and 390. Nine points. Again. I think that's well within tolerance. We had some, the Minnesota Twins be a pretty active team. So they led the American League in hitting. Oakland did not lead the American League in hitting. Home runs for me, 1777. It's a lot of home runs, isn't it? In real life, 1680. So that's probably there. So the home runs could be tuned down. Triples in real life, 538. 535 here. So we were only off three triples. Stolen bases, I had 50-26. And a 61% rate of good. 1471 and a 62% rate in real life. So the computer was a bit more aggressive than that. Again, depending on how much of a stickler you are, it gets it pretty much right. I never tinker with how the AI settings are. It goes with what it goes with. So that's straight out of the box, okay? Pitching. Again, we went through the app, the average OB and slugging. ERA for the league in real life, 378. My ERA was 398. That ran hot. Seattle's got awful, 507. Texas had a 349 real life ER or replay ERA. Texas had a 343 real life ERA. The Yankees in real life was 318. Hard to duplicate that. They had a 366. Again, you could look at that and go, that's not right. That's not right. But your mileage may vary. Complete games, because there were a lot of them in 1978. The computer had 716. Real life, 645. The one thing I will say, especially in this particular year, is that Action PC and relievers needed some work. Needed some work. And we're not, I'm not done with my 1949 replay, so I can't tell you that there. But because pitchers get overused, ERAs go up. Let's take a look at the NL, shall we? All 
All right, 358, the real life number with 389 complete games. 355, the ERA, so well, just within three points, and 412 complete games. So again, I think it used it better. It knows how to pinch hit, use the pinch hit logic and change things around. And I can't remember how many games of each league I played. Um, strikeouts, 10,030 in the replay for the NL. 99.05, so just 100 off on the strikeouts. Intentional walks, 842 for real. 484 for the computer. Again, you can change, however, the AI to, to mix and match that if that number is too low for you. And, of course, anytime you go through uh, a real, anytime you simulate a season, of course, it deviates from real life. Fielding, I had a fielding percentage of 978. We had 1,659 errors. We had 1,683 errors and a fielding percentage of 978. So the fielding percentage was right. Philadelphia had the best at 983 with 104 errors. And in my replay, they had 106 in a fielding percentage of 983. So that was the best. Atlanta had the worst fielding at 976 and 152 errors. And they had 153 errors in my replay and a fielding percentage of 975. American League, real 978 and 1,937 errors. 1,854 in the replay and a fielding percentage of 979. Again, it's hard to get defense right. I look at that 979 and I'm happy with it. One point off. I don't know if, if real outfield assists were tracked. Well, there's four, 480 in real life and we had 390 in the American League. So again, that has to do with how the computer handles base running, how aggressive or non-aggressive it is. And again, you can kind of mix or match that to your choice. This is all out of the box. Now, standings. These are my real these are my simulated standings. It got 3 of the 4 division champions right. Philadelphia with the best record in the league, Pittsburgh in second, Los Angeles with the best record in the National League West. Cincinnati finished third here at second in real life. San Francisco underachieved. San Diego did finish above 500. And the American League West, Texas beat out Kansas City by four. Kansas City beat out California and Texas by five. California, I think the bullpen woes for California just kind of took over. Too many complete games and that kind of hurt. In the American League East, we did have three teams within five games, and Boston finished 12 out. Jim Rice had 58 homers, and as a Jim Rice fan, you know, happier than a pig in poop. But it, And the Yankees were a 100-win team in real life, and they finished with 94 and 68. But again, there's really nothing here that's kind of out of whack. There are certain things going, you know, this should be better. Uh, and frankly, every time I played 1978 in the Sim Milwaukee, always over at Chiefs because their pitching is quite good. But, you know, I certainly take a look at that and quite kind of question how Boston finished. But I'll tell you why Boston finished that way, right? No, i got to go the other way. Look at all the innings they threw. And it didn't use Bob Stanley right. Bob Stanley had 100 less innings than he should have. But, again, bullpen um, AI needs some tweaking in this game. And look at the ERAs for Bergmeier, Drago, and Campbell. And we won't even talk about Mike Torres. So, as far as I'm concerned, they probably, you know, deserve to be that, that way. But you're going to have that variability in any game you play. And let's look at Jim Rice's numbers and kind of, oh, 
58 homers, 179 RBI. Of course, RBI, these were all real played lineups. So they went with what they went with in real life. Good, bad, or indifferent. And as far as putting ballparks and stuff in the game, yes. <laughs> there are a number that come with it. There's a very helpful community on the Tap Talk forums, the official Action PC community. They have a community mod site where you can find a lot of the ballparks. You can search my channel for how to doll up the ballparks and put things in the right spots. Uh, the chalkboard has greatly improved over the years. It's certainly a lot more animation than, than Strat PC has. OOTP, of course, is the best for that, uh, but they get into 3D. So hopefully that answered some of your questions. Your mileage may vary. Uh, I trust Strat. I, I trust, well, Strat is my card and dice game of choice, but I trust Action PC to give me the baseball experience that I'm looking for with numbers that will come out and results that are plausible. Is it perfect? There is no such thing as a perfect game. Like I said, I the 78 bullpen AI would be something I think the game had to work on. There's sometimes there are not enough triples. Um, but it does give you, I think, a very good bang for your buck. The game is on sale. Often the seasons are cheap, and you don't have to upgrade every year. Every season is compatible with every edition of the game. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not happy with the game. So try it out if you're on the fence uh, or watch any of the couple hundred streams I've had from replays. Everything is pretty much posted and up-to-date and see for yourself. And if any more questions, give a holler. We might do another one of these. But compare, you know, Action PC, the Strat, or any closed-engine game to an open-engine game, there's going to be an adjustment period. But bottom line, in my view, is... Trust the numbers Action PC gives you. And you can always tweak how the AI works. That's the great thing about it. But out of the box, I think it works just fine. I'm Ron Juckett. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you the next time.